Hi everyone, uh, my name is Hans Baumann and um, this is another edition of Onward at Home. Um, so I'm an artist, um, been commissioned by the Onward Project to um, make an art book kind of in response to the archives and some of the visits that um, uh, we've made out to Sagi Canyon. Um, but really just thinking about the Rainbow Bridge Monument Valley Expedition and its kind of legacy and how we might understand with it today, how we might deal with the archival material. So, um, you know, now that we're in quarantine, I can't really go to the archives um, and it's limited the scope of the work that I've been doing, but I've been getting some great support um, from you know, Allison and Maddie and, uh, of course, Elizabeth and others. Um, and I also um, had looked through the documentation enough that I've kind of collected it, coalesced it or whatever. Um, I have here some uh, like a binder with kind of like relevant imagery. So one of the things I'm really interested in is kind of like the architectural legacy of these sites, um, kind of, and, and, and then the way that they were represented um, by uh, various members of the expedition. A lot of these images are really beautiful. Um, so as I think about how I would digest it um, or represent it in this kind of book that I'm working on, uh, I've been looking at you know, other artists who have been grappling with kind of similar things. So um, here's a page I pulled, this artist, uh, Michelle Stewart. So, you know, she has kind of like similarly uh, archaeological concern. She's looking at um, kind of convention of, um, I guess, mapping or surveying uh, that's present in archaeology. Um, here's another book. Um, you know, again, just this kind of like you know, people whose whose interests kind of like lie in, in uh, geological material, and um, I guess you know, in a certain sense, ruins. Um, although that may be a misnomer. Um, right, here's another um, another piece of work. Um, so the, the way that the, these kind of things are translated and understood. Um, uh, yeah, I guess another thing, you know, when we talk about mapping is um, I've been looking at precedents, which are really kind of few and far between, uh, because mapping uh, typically has been a way of controlling land and controlling people uh, in a very kind of like exploitative way. Uh, so here's a book I found from the late 80s, um, Atlas of Great Lakes Indian History, um, really just started to go through it, so I don't have an opinion about it. But um, it seems like, um, you know, there's a lot of mappings in here um, that are aimed at kind of um, not necessarily telling a story that hasn't been told, but um, bringing together knowledge in, in, a, in a kind of um, a single place, right, so the book, um, which is, I think, something that, um, uh, you know, I'm definitely trying to do. Uh, because these kind of archives of the Rainbow Bridge Mining Valley are kind of characterized by how disparate they are. Um, here's another, um, here's another uh, book. Uh, my stack got a little <laughs> tall. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, it's interesting to me, for whatever reason, that um, a lot of these artists um, who are dealing with these kind of imagery tend to be um, uh, from Mexico, um, and I, I think maybe um, that kind of legacy is is more um, features more heavily, right? Like in the aesthetic language, um, and so that's something that um, I'm trying to consider. So, like you know, one of the you know I'm, I'm looking at books like decolonizing methodologies or whatever to kind of like grapple with the way that I think about these sites and the way that the expeditioners think about these sites and the way that other people think about these sites. And so as a part of that, I actually had a really um, great conversation with um, Professor James Sneed from um, Cal State Northridge. Um, I have a kind of lay person's interest in archaeology, um, so I felt like it was kind of important for me to uh, speak with him, you know, who's an expert in these kind of fields. And so, you know, one of the things I did, I, you know, he was gracious enough to allow me to record the conversation. And so I'm in the act of also transcribing it. But, you know, some of the questions that I had for him, I'll just read down the list um, before I wrap it up here is, uh, you know, is there a definitive beginning to archaeology in the Southwest? Um, I was also interested in learning if, if, if some of the indigenous peoples of that region 
practice something that we would consider archaeology or, or how they understood um, civilizations that were adjacent to them um, or ruins or how they considered ruins. Um, this kind of idea of the tension between um, collecting objects and then the, the, the way that a site is left behind and um, also just kind of this irony that some of the sites of interest, uh, especially in Sagi Canyon, uh, were ruins longer than their actual functional dwellings. So this idea of is the ruin defined by intention, you know, in the sense that it was constructed as a home or uh, for some other purpose, or, um, you know, what happens when we regard it simply through its materiality. So like this idea of it being adobe constructed by people or rocks or whatever. So um, these are just some of the considerations I'm having as I'm under quarantine and um, trying to kind of uh, make the inquiry as expansive as possible, but also kind of reduce it into a narrative that will be um, understood and be able to be engaged with by um, all of you out there. So thank you for your time.